Gassiakum, you look out here and there are literally 75 million people here. Uh, how do you how do you process this moment, my G? Hey, this is crazy, man. I, I can't believe I heard you it. say this is crazy like seven times. I don't know <laughs> what else to say. I don't know what else to say. It's crazy. It's Listen, amazing. Two years ago, you were the MVP of the G League. Two years later, you're an M you're an NBA champion, and you and Kawhi Leonard are now the second highest scoring duo. <laughs> soak it in, my friend, soak it in. You guys are now the second highest scoring duo and the NBA playoffs tying Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. When you hear that, you think what? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. That's the only thing I can say. We all blessed, man. It's an amazing moment. Just, I don't know what else to say, man. It's amazing. When are we going to mercy on many men. Many men, many, many men. Wish that for me, dear. I don't cry no more. Paul George, Goran Dragic. Jimmy Butler, C.J. McCollum, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Victor Oladipo, and Pascal Siakam. Now you may be wondering what all these players have in common. Is that they're all at least one-time All-Stars, and they've all won the Most Improved Player Award. As a matter of fact, these are the last seven players to win the award. The past few years, Pascal Siakam has been steadily improving and shocking almost every single person in the league. With a long 7 foot 3 wingspan, Siakam is a lengthy versatile forward who has been a major impact for the second best team in the East, the Toronto Raptors, in more ways than we can see. When Siakam won most improved player last season, not only did we see his improvement, but we saw what he could do alongside an all time great talent in Kawhi Leonard over the course of the season and during the playoffs. For the Raptors and the city of Toronto, winning that ring was history. Something that this team has never won before and something that the city sports teams hadn't experienced since 1993. The Raptors have had some exciting teams stocked with talent, such as the teams with Chris Bosh, DeMar DeRozan, Vince Carter, and let's not forget Andrea Bargnani. We shouldn't look over the impact DeMar DeRozan had while he was in Toronto and everything he did which put the Raptors in position to go out to get a top tier talent. That trade for Kawhi Leonard was heartbreaking, but who knows if the Raptors are in the same position to win the championship with one of the best two way players of all time. That postseason run that the Raptors went on doesn't get talked about nearly as much as it deserves to. Not only was Kawhi extremely efficient during the postseason, but some could argue he was doing all of that while not even being 100%. When efficiency meets volume and volume meets playing both sides of the ball, it's a very dangerous thing. And the Raptors were a complete team with Kawhi being the complete player. Now, with the Raptors fresh off a championship, questions started to arise. What will be next for this franchise? What would their future look like with Kawhi heading out west to join Paul George on the Clippers? There was a lot of talking this summer. While some thought the Raptors would only have a marginal decline, others straight up thought the Raptors would fall and become a lottery bound team. Which could have happened if they didn't have the right mindset. Despite losing the claw, the Raptors defense has actually improved. They have gone from being the number 5 defense to the number 2 defense and Siakam has gone from being the number two scoring option to the number one scoring option. And let's make this clear, Siakam is a player that doesn't need a play called for him to score or to have an impact on the game. Despite his improvements last season and the season before that, he is still going. He already has won most improved player award and is looking to become the first player in the history of the game to get two of them. Although I'm sure he has his sights set much higher, he is a player one to win a championship, but also contend for an MVP award in the upcoming season. No matter who you think should win the Most Improved Player award, it's hard to argue with what Pascal turned in this season. Just one season ago, he was averaging 16.9 points, and the season before that was 7.3 points. One more season before that, in his rookie debut, he was only averaging 4.2 points. 
but now he's averaging 23.6 points on 45.9% from the field, all while shooting threes at a 36% clip. Siakam's a terror to defend because he is a matchup nightmare. Tweener. We will come back to this term in just a second. Now around 10 years ago, the Golden State Warriors had a player by the name of Anthony Randolph. And by no means am I comparing Pascal to Anthony Randolph in any way, shape, or form. But I thought Anthony Randolph was going to be a big time player. Not a superstar, but a decent starter level player. It seemed that he fit in the direction that the NBA was going to, but unfortunately he may have been five years too early. He was in the perfect up-tempo system, which would later go on and shape the NBA. But to be short, he was a beast. He was a player who was 6'9", 6'10", with a long, lanky windspan, could go ahead and handle the ball, push the pace, and defensively, he was a walking highlight. He was labeled a tweener by many, and his career didn't match that of his potential. One of his biggest downfalls of his career was the label that he was given, which was he was a tweener. This kind of leads us to the definition of what is a tweener. Now a tweener is a player that's able to play two positions, but not ideally suited for either position exclusively. This player is someone who fits multiple positions, but doesn't necessarily excel at any one. Nowadays, that's a great asset for teams, but in the past, nobody wanted that. Coming into the NBA, NBADraft.net had Siakam as someone who showed tremendous defensive ability and could utilize their size and wingspan along with their quickness as an absolute terror in the open floor and will outwork their opponents hustling down the floor on every single possession. And not only has that been true in college, but I can tell you firsthand, it's been true in the NBA as well. Siakam is only averaging seven and a half boards per game, but sometimes that feels like it's 20. Siakam has the ability to not only be everywhere on the floor, but he can make it feel like you're playing against four of the exact same player. Playing hard by itself gets you a long way in the NBA, but if you play hard and you have the skills, you become a different beast. Siakam has the ability to guard one through five. This makes him invaluable to what the Raptors want to do. This is a team that's not afraid to get up in your face and force you to put the ball on the floor and make a play. This is a team that wants you to be uncomfortable. We already knew Siakam could finish, and he had the ability to be a catch and shoot player. Now he's shooting pull ups and creating his own shot. Now he has a very long way to go, but his improvement is inevitable. For reference, last season he was shooting pull up three pointers at 12.5%. This was something that wasn't in his bag, he didn't have it equipped yet. This season, He's all the way up to 34.3%. That number may not wow you, but it helps to make a player like Pascal much more versatile and even more unguardable. And it's a problem that other teams have to account for and game plan for. One good thing about the Raptors is that they are a deep team and everybody knows their role. And they also know how to fulfill that role and play it to their best ability. Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Vliet, OG Ananobi are all fantastic players. And Van Vliet is even a guy who should have possibly even been an all-star this season. Siakam isn't the only guy to step up though. Norman Powell, Storm and Norman, has nearly doubled his points, going from 8.6 to 16.4. I love what Masai is building up here in Toronto. I love the moves that he's been making. Gasol has been such an underrated trade deadline pickup, and don't even get me started on Serge Ibaka, or should I say Serge Ibaka. 
with Toronto sitting as the two seed in the East, heading into the Orlando bubble, who knows what's next for this up-and-coming franchise.